what you really need to consider is why you're on social media. So for what purpose? What is it going to give you? Is it going to give you awareness? Is it going to give you customer service? Is it going to give you lead generation? Is it going to give you engagement with your members or potential prospects? So once you understand what you know you want to get out of it, then the rest is pretty simple and putting a roadmap together. You're listening to episode 181 of the Fitness Business Podcast. We'd like to thank this month's premier podcast partner, One Fit Stop. Scheduling, member management, point of sale, member apps, and multi location support that will set your business up for success. Welcome back to all of our regular listeners and a warm welcome to anyone that's joining us for the very first time. If you are new to the show, then make sure that you take a second to jump over to the website at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and subscribe to the show notes. This week, I have got a super size show for you guys. My special guest is the founder and director of social media at Think Tank Social, Sam Mutimer. Sam's journey to becoming a social media expert is a fascinating story. After playing rugby for England, she broke her leg in 2008, and that was the point where she became aware of the true power of social media and how it plays a role in branding and business. Deciding to make the most out of her time out, she began posting about her injury on YouTube, and she started advertising space for businesses to bid in order to get their brand seen online. The video went viral and received over 27,000 views in just a matter of weeks. As she watched the volume of inquiries flood in, it justified to Sam the value of great content and a solid network connections for brands on social platforms. So on her return to Australia, Sam launched her own company, Think Tank Social, as a niche social media agency. Then later in 2016, she launched Think Tank Scout, focusing on supporting, empowering, and setting up athletes for ongoing success pre, during, and post-career via social and digital channels. Now, with such an amazing wealth of experience, I asked Sam to join me on the show so that we could talk about social media strategy for your fitness business, specifically during the interview. We cover where to start when developing a social media strategy for your business. We talk about the key components of a Facebook strategy, the key components of an Instagram strategy, the advantages and disadvantages of outsourcing, plus Sam leaves us with three tips on developing your social media strategy. As I mentioned up front, this is a jam-packed show. So if you need to, make sure that you stop the podcast to write down any specific actions that you want to integrate into your business. And as always, you can head over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com and download a transcript of the full show. So we're about to transition into this week's interview, but first I want to thank this month's podcast partner. One Fit Stops scheduling, client management, programming, and payment collection tools will set your business up for for success. To find out more, go to onefitstop.com. Enjoy this week's interview with Sam Mutimer. Hey, Sam, welcome along and thank you so much for joining me today. Great to be back, Chantel. I am really excited to talk about this topic. I feel like we could probably talk about social media every week and there'd be something new to talk about. But today we're going to be focusing on social media strategy. So can you give us an idea where we should actually start when we're developing a social media strategy for our business? Yeah, a great question. So with a lot of business owners, they seem to just jump in and focus on the tools. What you really need to consider is why you're on social media. So for what purpose? What is it going to give you? Is it going to give you awareness? Is it going to give you customer service? Is it going to give you lead generation? Is it going to give you engagement with your members or potential prospects? So once you understand what you know you want to get out of it, then the rest is pretty simple and putting a roadmap together. So really highlighting the objectives and then drilling down into the types of content that you'll need to develop to service on those objectives. So basically these days, I find it very easy um, in business to be successful because in 2018, online privacy is pretty much dead, Mm -hmm. meaning that we can attract an audience um, or we can get content in front of an audience we want at a localized level or a national level and get them to do something. But it always comes down to the content. And 
you know, so many people come to us and they're like, oh, we need to be on Facebook and we need to be on Instagram. And yeah, fine. If these are the tools of choice, no problem. But before that, you actually need to develop some content that's going to capture your market. And if you haven't got the attention of the end consumer, then social media is not going to cut it for you. The other thing about strategy as well is you really need to be looking at social media as a long game. Um, It's not like a silver bullet. Like we have so many companies come to us and expect like success and lead generation overnight. Social media is about people becoming aware of you or your business or your brand or your gym. And then from there, starting to consider, oh, you know, maybe I'll go to it. Maybe I'll inquire. Maybe I'll pick up the phone. Maybe I'll share this piece of content. And lastly, it's to convert. So if you have a strategy over a 12-month period, really within, within the first 90 days, you want to be looking at awareness and awareness only. And that comes down to what type of content is going to resonate with my audience to make them aware of who we are and what we stand for and what we do. So it could be testimonial content of someone coming out of the gym and just saying, you know, I just absolutely love being here. I find this gym so, so friendly and they're always, you know, they remember my name and I've had so much success you know, using that type of testimonial as a video or really just anything that's going to be able to add value to your end user. So one of the things that we always ask ourselves is like, take off your marketing head and put on your human head. What would you want to see? What would get you excited? What would get you to want to engage or comment or share? What would get you to want to pick up the phone and then go away and start to develop that content? Because marketing, it's the easy thing. It's producing it is where you have to be yeah, really creative and really laser focused on the type of people that you want coming into your, into your gym, into your club, into, into your business or who you actually want to be servicing PT sessions with. Sam, you mentioned content quite a bit in that answer there. Are there any examples of fitness businesses or personal trainers that you've seen operating you know, recently that you would say are an absolute stellar example of who's really nailing their social media strategy and their content production? Yeah, there's, been a, there's definitely been a few businesses. What I've loved about some of the um, localized gyms around our area is they've been doing Facebook Lives. So a little bit of behind the scenes, what to expect before you come in, Q&A, um, where they start to mention, you know, people are asking you about membership and, you know, can I, have you got a digital membership or, you know, what, what does the gym look like inside? Give us a tour. And I think these types of, you know, live sessions are great because it breaks down the barriers and people feel a little bit more comfortable coming into the gym knowing that they've seen the owner or they've met with one of the PTs and it's just an easy sell. Off the back of the Facebook Lives as well, um, you can actually put advertising spend behind it. So let's just say, Chantelle, that you've watched my behind the scenes and I'm taking you around the gym and I'm answering all these different questions that are coming in. I can then put some Facebook advertising spend behind it. I can retarget you. And I can retarget a lookalike audience of you. And, you know, these things are really important because once someone's aware of you in the gym, let's say again through the Facebook Live, you then want to start to get your content in front of them so they're considering it. Oh, yeah, I remember that Facebook Live. Oh, now I've just seen that video testimony or someone that's lost some weight or someone that's really got shredded and gone into a bikini competition. Now I'm actually going to convert and inquire and become a member. So these are one of the things I think um, are not used enough. Um, in social media and are very easy to use and that's what people want they just want they're human they want to be engaging with humans and live is a great way to do that excellent well I want to kind of dive into Facebook a little bit more because I know that's obviously a platform that so many fitness professionals out there use and let's say we've taken that first step that you talked about which was really identifying you know what platforms we want to be on you know taking it right back to our original social media strategy so let's say for example we have identified that Facebook is one of those platforms that we want to be active on for our own own business what would you say are the key components of a Facebook strategy? Mm -hmm. so again like it's it's a it's a funnel strategy so facebook is about awareness consideration and conversion so as you're developing your content you want to have pieces of content that you know make people aware of your gym and what's inside it like the opening hours and then some consideration contents so it could be like a campaign i don't know it could be um win a pair of adidas shoes i'm not too sure but you know now they're starting to consider and they're entering their email address in and then you want to ask for the sale so that conversion so whether that's an offer an incentive a meet and greet um just branching from facebook just slightly and leveraging it back in influencer marketing is huge at the moment so if there's someone in your localized area 
And it doesn't need to be a celebrity. It can be a micro influencer. So let's just say a mum that comes to your gym that's got an audience that you want to get in front of, then you can start to bring her in as part of your content strategy. Do a deal with her. So it could be that you say, hey, Chantel, we're going to give you a year's free membership. And as part of that year free membership, you're going to develop some content for us just to showcase your journey and coming to the gym three times a week. And what we're going to do with that content is we're going to put it out on Facebook and you're going to put it out onto your social channels. And we're probably going to put some advertising spend behind it as well. So um, you need to make that content real and you need to ensure that it's been targeted to the right people. And then again, like, don't be afraid to ask for the sale once you've educated them enough to get them excited about joining. I love that concept of a micro influencer because I think, you know, we often think about uh, the, you know, having ambassadors in our business or influencers in our business, but by breaking it down to that kind of micro level and the example that you just gave of, you know, let's say there's a mum in our gym that's working out, that could be a really great person to utilize. So I want to just take the opportunity to encourage everyone to have a think at the moment about their own client base, whether you're a personal trainer and it's the the clients that you're working with, or you're a gym owner and it's the people that are coming in and attending your classes, I guess, have a think about who from those audiences could be a micro influencer for your business. Okay. So let's hold there for just a second. If you like the sound of that micro influencer or the ambassador concept, I have actually included in the show notes, a sample ambassador agreement from our foundation partner, Active Management. You can download it at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com in today's show notes. And if you want to know more on the subject, then go back and take a listen to show 145 with our special guest, Deb Heisler, where we go into detail about using a brand ambassador in your fitness business. I'll include a link in the show notes. Okay, let's go back to the show where Sam is going to give us one more tip regarding Facebook marketing. If you're using Facebook for lead generation, our Facebook account manager, we've been running this with gyms probably for the last maybe two years now, similar strategies, you'd need a minimum if you're looking for conversion of one and a half thousand dollars, that's Aussie dollars a month to invest into that full funnel strategy to get your conversion. So Sam, when you said one and a half thousand Aussie dollars per month, is that regardless of business size? Yeah, it is because you're all competing to get in the news feed. So everyone's bidding to get the right audience at the right time. And so whether you're small or large, again, everyone's in that space. Like Facebook is a lucrative business um, and yeah, you will get charged those rates. Granted, if you've been on Facebook for three or four years um, and you've been using the advertising tools, you probably will pay a lower cost per click or conversion to someone that's just started on Facebook in, from an advertising perspective. There's other ways which we could touch on, Chantelle, as well around if you haven't got or if you're choosing not to invest into Facebook, I can share other ways that we've been successful. But just while we're on Facebook advertising, a lot of gyms, I would imagine, would have a database. Um, One of the things, if you've not done this already, is to set up your ads manager, so business manager for Facebook. And what you can do, and this is where you can get a really low cost and low conversion, is you can upload your database into Facebook. And if someone is using the same email address as their Facebook login, as what they are for the email they've given you, you can target them and then you can do a mirror audience of them, which is basically like, let's just say me, Sam, 39 years old, lives in Melbourne, goes to Good Life Health Clubs in Paran, loves the Melbourne Demons. You can duplicate an audience of me through a different ad set without having to think about it. And what we do know is when we work with gyms and we upload databases into Facebook that we get much lower cost per click and cost per lead conversion from being able to do that. Right. So all we need to do that, is that a lookalike audience, Sam? Is that what that is? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. So all we need to, for a starting point for that is that database that we've collected. Co- correct. And I don't want to get too technical, but again, this probably will be the last thing I'd share on it. Um, if you are investing into Facebook, you need to get a Facebook pixel on your website. So if you don't, then you'll be wasting money. The purpose of the pixel is that, number one, you can show a conversion. So it's a little bit of code that you can put on your website. You can get your developer to do it or it's, there's lots of YouTube videos on how to do it. But you can see how much traffic's coming from your Facebook ad. So let's just say it's 17 cents for them to click across to your website and it's costing, let's say, $1.50 to convert, which means they've filled in a form. What you can do with that pixel is you can then retarget that person again. So let's just say I've come to the website, 
um, I don't know, the peas are on the boil, are they going to boil over? So I have to go and rescue them and I've left the website. Then you can actually retarget me again. And then you can do a lookalike audience of me again from the pixel on the website. So you can see how if you set this strategy up well, there's little wastage of money. Um, and you can be very highly targeted on the type of person that you want to inquire. You just need to know what you're doing in Facebook advertising and no boost posting. It's a no, no, it's a waste of money. Go into the back end of Facebook and there's something called post engagement. That's what you need to be using. If you boost posting, it really is not targeted and you're wasting, you're, yeah, you're wasting your money there. Oh, okay. So hold the phone a second because I know a lot of people <laughs> are probably going to be going, but it's so easy to just hit that boost button. Why don't, why don't we want to boost? Is it too broad? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Facebook, make it easy. They suck up your money. You need, yeah, you absolutely need to be going into the back end and targeting the type of audience that you want. So a boost post is like a post engagement ad. So you can go into the back end, set up a post engagement ad and then target who it is that you want. So you can target location. Let's say they're going to a fitness expo and you know that that's the type of audience that you want. You can target your post locationally around that fitness expo. If you just boosted it, then it's literally just going out to some followers and some followers that like that similar audiences. And that's where you, you, you may see some likes. Meh, who cares about the likes? You want the engagement and you want the conversion. So again, get yourself savvy with Facebook business manager and ads manager within it. And again, like if you do invest there, then you, you will start to become successful. You just need to get into the back end and start to understand it a bit more. Thank you for explaining that to us, Sam. Okay, let's transition over to Instagram now. So we talked about the key components of a Facebook strategy. Are they similar or different when we're looking at Instagram? Yeah, Instagram's really, it is different to Facebook. So people go on Facebook usually for friends and family and discovery. People go on Instagram for a niche passion or a purpose. So when you're developing Instagram content, um, I mean, you could use a similar image, but it's a, just different copy. It's different text. So make it really, really niche to not only like your health club or your personal training studio, but what you can also do is, um, I suppose, start to leverage those hashtags. So we spoke earlier about influencers, right? or people that you might want to leverage that go to your gym. I would recommend that each gym develops their own hashtag and then you can track it that way. You start to encourage members to start to use it and incentivize them to I don't know, win a holiday or whatever it is, they can win something. And then you can start to pick up on those hashtags, comment on their pictures, and then potentially regram and use some of their content as part of yours if you ask. And that type of strategy is really organic and people love that because Sometimes they don't just want to hear from the brand. They want to hear from the people that go into the health club and their experiences. So you want to encourage content sharing. And the brands that do, you know, the brands that ultimately get that, I've got the cream. If someone's talking about you more than you are, then that's every business wants that. So some of the Instagram strategies are how do we encourage our member or our potential member or our micro-influencer to start talking about our gym in a meaningful way that we can then reuse some of that content to reach new audiences. The other thing about Instagram is you have to be, a, be aware that Facebook owns Instagram. So you can run Instagram ads. And one of the most successful with the gyms we're working with ads compared to Facebook ads right now are Instagram stories. So we did one recently um, and it was, oh, it, it was a reduced cost. Um, and it was like, in a, I think it was like April and it was just a tiny little video that showcased the gym. And then it was a swipe up to inquire. And we got higher lead conversion through that face, uh, sorry, from that Instagram story ad than what we did through our Facebook advertising and lower spend. So when you think about Instagram again, like it's niche, um, but it's documentary and storytelling through Instagram stories is probably one of the main I, I would say main ways that you can start to engage with that person that's considering joining your health club by, again, Instagram takeovers, getting people to take over and showcase the gym, showcase the day in the life of, some of the staff can showcase what they are doing in the gym. And then you can use that story as an advert as well with a swipe up to inquire. Okay, Sam, I want to talk more about this Instagram story swipe up because I think that it's an area that probably a lot of people haven't explored as yet and might be interested in. So where do we go to set up our Instagram advertising? You know, we all know where to go to, to set up our, um, to have a look at our Facebook analytics and set up our advertising for Facebook. Where do we go to do our Instagram advertising? 
it's in the same place. It's an ads manager. Um, and it will say, would you like to run this on Instagram too? And then you select yes. You can target your audience there. You can select story. Um, you just need to make sure that you've got, obviously, the right content and the right size for an Instagram story to go in. Um, and then you just book it in. And we'd recommend as well that you run it on a lifetime budget, not just like a daily budget. Because on a daily budget, Facebook will just say that, for example, you put $10 a day, Facebook will just burn that up and keep spending. Whereas if you put a lifetime budget, for example, over a four-week period, Facebook will just see when your users are on and off and then spend accordingly. But everything's done in Facebook Business Manager in the Ads Manager section. And with that swipe up capability, do you have to have a minimum number of followers in order to make that active? Not if you're using advertising. If you're not, then you do. But if you're using Facebook advertising, you can use a swipe up. Uh Uh-huh. So if you pay for it, you're okay. Yes. (laughs) Okay. And you gave us... And it's cheap, Chantel. Well, that's what I was just about to ask about budget because we talked about one and a half thousand a month for Facebook. What... Can you put a number on Instagram? Like how much are we talking about for an Instagram live campaign? I would, I would divvy it up, to be honest. So um, within Facebook and Instagram, you can split test your ads. I don't want to get overly complex here, but I think it's important that we're all aware of the fact of what's possible. So, for example, let's say you ran three Facebook ads and three Instagram ads, all which are conversion ads. So basically we're setting up a piece of content because we want someone to fill in a form. You set them up and then you just divvy the budget. So 1,500 divided by six, and then you watch it. So every 24, 48 hours, let it run for a couple of days. And then afterwards, see which ads are performing the best. And then you can pause some, um, keep the others going, ship some coin from one ad that's bombing out into maybe the Insta story ad that's doing really well. You just need to be across it, but give it at least 48 hours for it to kick into Facebook's algorithms and start to get that content out there. Great recommendation. Now, I know that there's going to be a lot of people out there thinking, man, there, that is a lot of information we've just gone through in, yes. in 20 minutes. Oh so. And it can, can feel pretty <laughs> overwhelming when, you know, you know this, this topic inside out and you deal with this every single day. But for most of us, we're spending our time just, you know, trying to run a fitness business or get new clients for yeah. our personal training business and that type of thing. So it's hard yeah. to devote that the headspace to properly understanding social media strategy so in your opinion Sam you know at what point do we look at outsourcing our social media strategy and and management versus how much can we generally handle ourselves I think if you're a smaller business you can absolutely handle it yourself and for everyone like even us as an agency you've got to think people first be client centric Okay, so if you don't have an advertising spend, what are some of the things that you can do in the club face-to-face to get people to start to share their stories, leveraging their own Instagram accounts? Like These things are pretty you know, simple once you know and once you're planned. So it's about how do I give that client or that member the best experience and how do I get them to start talking about that online through their own social channels, maybe tagging us that we can reuse. Um, when it comes to advertising, Uh, then if you are willing to go the next level and to to ramp that up, then I think like an agency or bringing someone in-house and putting them on a Facebook advertising course is really smart. Uh, It's 2018 and like your audience is online and they want to be engaged. And it's like, you know, you can, online privacy is dead. You can target anyone. So you need to be, even though you're running the gym and you're doing everything else, you need to be savvy around this stuff because this is going to be the difference between you bringing in new members and retaining them to the gym down the road. Um, And it's about becoming wise and going, yes, I know it's unknown or I know it's something else I need to do. You guys have to do it. Like you actually have to know this on some level or lean on an agency to do it. I don't believe that any gym owner needs to lean on an agency from a content production perspective. Yes, granted, they can lean on an agency to put together a strategy and then that agency comes in and educates the personal trainers, the people on the floor. This is your role. This is what we need you to do on a weekly basis. And this is how you're helping us get to where we need to be over the next 12 months. So giving your team a vision of how social media is playing a role and how they're playing a part in it. But yeah, as mentioned, from an ad perspective, you may want to lean on a a business or an agency to develop the ads with the content that you've produced. We've had clients come to us and they've not had a big advertising spend. Sometimes that's a good thing because it makes you think outside the box. Okay, where is the audience? How do we find them? We found we've had a lot of traction in Facebook groups. So you can search specific groups. And um, with one client, one of their groups had 40,000 members. Okay, so granted it wasn't a health club. It was a vacuum cleaner. 
and they had a group called Mums That Clean and it had 40,000 people within it. And we asked to join it and we added some value. We ran a competition and we started to get um, reviews on the vacuum cleaner. Our sales went through the roof. We weren't spending it in advertising and we were getting reviews. And so sometimes you can think, okay, if I haven't got that money to spend right now in advertising, where else can I find those people? And Facebook groups are a really good place to start and build up a relationship with the group owner, make it a win-win, and then you can start to contribute valuable content in there and, again, like watch, watch the conversions come off the back of it. Something that springs to mind when you say that is, is if I was a personal trainer that, let's say, for example, specialised in training mums with bubs, then what you're saying is I could try and get invited into one of the local groups and start yeah. to perhaps offer some little tidbits of advice here and there without any sales message, but just literally offering value and trying to yeah. just over a period of time build that rapport with the people in the group. Is that correct? Yeah, you could say, look, guys, um, I'm all, you know, I work with um, mums and I help them transition into, yeah, back to their, their everyday bodies. I'd love to put forward, you know, a, a 20 minute Facebook Live every week. I'm going to do one on workout, I'm going to do one on nutrition. Yeah, I'm not going to charge you, it's not going to be sales, but I'd love to do that over the next four weeks and, and let's just see the traction that we can get. And then off the back of that, then have an opportunity then to, they'll already find that people will be like, how do I get in touch with you? Or I find this really useful. Um, that would be a really good way in. Yeah, I really like that strategy, especially for anyone that's starting out or doesn't have that marketing budget that we were talking about. So, Mm -hmm. okay, so let's finish off today, Sam, with your top three tips on developing our social media strategy. Okay, so number one, know what you want social media to do. So set some goals and objectives and have an expectation this is going to take time. This media is not going to be an overnight success. So once you understand what you want to get out of it, so again, let's just say brand awareness, educating and retaining members and bringing new ones on board, then you now need to look at ways to be able to market to them. So the second tip is to develop great content, content that people are going to find valuable, not push content about your gym, but more about the people within it, the community, what you give, how you've made them feel, why do they keep coming back? And then lastly, how are you going to market it? So again, I, in today's modern age, I would have a budget for social media. So having a budget and understanding what you want that money to do. So again, we've spoken about $1,500. That's like a full funnel strategy where you're really driving leads. You could start off with $500. I'm going to dedicate $500 to Facebook. I'm going to put that $500 behind this piece of content, which is going to be engaging, this piece of content, which is going to make people aware of us, and this piece of content, which is going to drive people to the website. And over the next four to eight weeks, I'm going to look at what the results have been and increase, decrease, and tweak as you go. The goals never change, but the pathway does. So be flexible. Give something a go for at least 90 days prior to changing it. And yeah, lastly, just be people first, be about your member. And the more you care about your member, the more the member will be that salesperson for you that on is, and offline. That is great advice, Sam. Hey, I want to thank you so much. I cannot believe how much content we have just covered in 30 minutes. Oh. It is incredible. So I'm going to encourage everyone to download the transcript of today's interview, because if you need to kind of break it down a little bit and have a look at each of those sections that we explored today, then I would suggest that transcript is a great way for you to do that. Now, Sam, if people want to get in touch with you, if they want to find out more about your agency and the work that you do and whether or not that's an option that they want to explore, where should they get in contact with you? Yeah. So it's thinktanksocial.com.au. Nice and easy. And of course, we'll put that link in today's show notes. So Sam, I want to say thank you so much for coming on today and for sharing your expertise and definitely your energy with the listeners of the Fitness Business Podcast. Thanks, Chantelle. Pleasure to be here. MyZone is a wearable technology platform that leverages personal goal setting, gamification, and social platforms to motivate your members. To find out more, go to myzone.org. Precore Quick Fire 5. Next week, we have an In the Trenches episode coming your way. Our special guest is the Regional Fitness Director for Orange Theory Fitness, Zach Bell, and he joins me now for the Precore Quick Fire 5. 
Zach, welcome and thank you so, so much for joining us on the show. Oh, thank you so much. It is an absolute pleasure to, uh, to be here talking to you. Now, uh, we're going to kick things off today with the pre-call Quick Fire Five. So tell everyone, why do you do what you do? Oh, man. I think most fitness professionals give the cliche answer of, I really enjoy um, helping people. But in all honesty, I tell folks all the time, you can find something that um, you feel very passionate about. And it just so happens that you're helping a wide range of people at the same time. It's very rewarding. So I think that's why I do what I do on a, on a daily basis to, to be able to connect with people, whether it be employees or clients, staff members. It's a great day when I can connect with some folks, maybe teach somebody a thing or two throughout the process. So I think it's just connecting really is being around people and helping them reach their goals, whether it be professionally or personally. And what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? You know, I, I, when I got this question, I was trying to think of something that, that, I, that I do day in and day out. I actually, breathing was, was something. And it's funny when I think about breathing, you know, literally like, you know, of course, um, breathing being an integral part of all of our <laughs> existence. But, um, you know, w- when I have challenging situations in, in my own personal day to day as in my role, whether it be a difficult conversation or a difficult decision that I have to make, Really honing in on my breathing is, is something that helps me. And it's amazing because it's something that I preach in session when I'm coaching clients all the time. And then even in my own wellness practice, um, whether it be like yoga or, or running or something like that. So literally, uh, my mother always said, you know, just take a deep breath. And I've kind of tried to carry that on as I've grown along in my career and also personally. So that's actually something I intentionally think about doing is, is breathing, uh, as funny as that might sound. Yeah, I, I'm actually really glad that you mentioned that because I'm very much the same, Zach. And I think that it's, you know, as you say, it's it's part of life. It's something that we all do, but intentional breathing is is quite different and using it as a way to prepare for a big moment is something different again. And yeah, so I want to thank you for that because I think it's something that we sometimes, because we take it for granted, we don't think about utilizing it in those situations, but it can actually be really beneficial for us. I actually think it's a great answer. And what app or system do you use to stay in control of your workload? You know, there's, it's amazing. Our company is, I think we do, our group, we do a great job of, of staying connected and communicating. It's something that's been kind of passed down to me as being very, very important and we use a, a whole suite of different apps, essentially communication focused. I, I think I put, um, when I was looking up at the questions and, and, and trying to come up with that one great app, maybe that nugget that I could help people out with, I think I just listed essentially all of Google's productivity apps because uh, that's what we use the, the most. But you know, I put one on there. Um, uh, there's a mindfulness app that I use. And I guess it kind of ties into the breathing thing. But again, personally, professionally, it's an app that kind of takes, it takes about five or 10 minutes. Uh, and it helps me either start my day or finish my day. And it helps me me personally be more productive in the way that I communicate and the way that I, the, that I carry myself throughout the day. And I just feel like if I go through this mindfulness, if I go through this technique a little bit, if I put some intentional focus in myself to start off my day, then I can be better equipped or better positioned to help folks or be, like, like you said, productive. So... All of Google, if that's a possible answer, <laughs> and then uh, and then there's a mindfulness app. Yeah, a little self, a little self love, a little a little meditation to start the day is usually a good thing for me. And is is the app that you're referring to? Is it actually called mindfulness? Uh, yeah, it is actually. Okay. Um, well, I've used a few different ones. There's there's a one called Headspace that yeah. I think is probably the best. Yeah. Um, it's called mindfulness. I'd actually have to look it up on my phone. I just click the, the little logo and I haven't read the, the name it's in quite some time. Part of the habit. Well, Headspace is yeah. definitely one that we hear of a lot. And I always share with people, there's a great one called Buddhify. And personally, I use one that's called Calm. And if you yeah. like the whole, you know, in, intentional breathing for, you know, for a particular purpose, then Calm is a beautiful app to use that I recommend um, people can try out. So thank you so much for that, Noel. Um, I'll find the link. We'll definitely pop Headspace in there. And if there's any others that you want to link up, let me know. And we'll put those in the show notes. Sure. And so, uh, Zach, what's one book, podcast, or blog that you'd recommend and why? Well, you know, I, it's funny. Your last guest, Ryan Holiday, is actually mm-hmm. one of my favorite authors. Uh-huh. And I, of his books that he has, I think The Daily Stoic uh, is, a, is a great text. You know, it's a, it's a short, um, easy to digest, uh, but I feel like very impactful and very you know, beneficial tool for just kind of a little day-to-day check on, on yourself and, and doing a little self-auditing or, or maybe just giving you the reminder you need on, on how you should 
kind of carry yourself or how I feel I should carry myself or maybe some rules to live by. So, you know, anything by Ryan Holiday, I'm a big fan of. I think uh, most of his work is enjoyable reads. It's applicable. It seems very relevant. And um, Daily Stoic, Ego's the Enemy, those are both like probably my, my two favorite books. I really enjoy those. Great recommendation. And if anyone missed our interview with Ryan Holiday, that was show 180. So you can check that out and I'll put another link in the show notes for today. And Zach, tell everyone just briefly what we're going to be focusing on during your main interview next week. Yeah, main, main, uh, main focus is going to be people. I mean, that's what the fitness business is all about is people. So we're going to do some talk about uh, recruiting and, and how to get the best people um, for you and your brand and um, find those people that are going to stick around and, and be the perfect pieces for your puzzle. Such an important topic. Well, I want to thank you so much for joining me today for the Pre-Court Quick 5-5. Five five. Thanks, Zach. Yeah, thank you so much. Before we finish off today, a reminder that all the resources, the links, and a transcript for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. Thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. They, of course, have an amazing gift for you all. Their number one selling checklist is yours for free. It will turn your About Us page on your website into a lead generating page. All you need to do is go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active for your free download. Thank you so much for joining me for another week of the show. I'll see you next week and and remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Mm-hmm.